Hey, what's up everybody? Mr. Hargitai here. Hope you're all doing well, happy, healthy. Today we're gonna to try to do something a little bit different. Now, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but outside of teaching, one of the things I love most is traveling. Because I like traveling so much, I actually did have plans over spring break to go to Hawaii and Tokyo. But thanks to everything that's happening now, uh, I had to kind of change my plans a little bit. Now it's like forget Hawaii, more like goodbye E to that money I spent on those plane tickets. Forget Tokyo, more like you need to stay inside your Toki home. Okay, I'm done. But all jokes aside, this is world literature, and I feel like we have an incredible opportunity here, because just because you can't leave your home doesn't mean you can't explore the world. Ugh, Mr. Hargitai, is this going to be one of those we can explore the world through the magic of reading type things? Um, no. So buckle up, everybody. Our first literary journey is going to take us somewhere with a little more sun. All right, all right, cue the uh, energetic music. So our first stop on our literary itinerary is South America. More specifically, we'll be checking out Colombia, famous for coffee, emeralds, and of course, Nobel Prize winning author Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Now, Gabriel Garcia Marquez was originally a journalist, but he created some of the world's most famous literary works of all time. Chronicle of a Death Foretold, Love in the Time of Cholera, which if you've been on the internet now, you've noticed people keep making the same kind of joke about love in the time of Corona and thinking they're the first ones to make that joke. <laughs> so funny. And perhaps his most famous of all time, 100 Years of Solitude. And 100 Years of Solitude is a very relevant title for how we all feel right here, right now. So why does Marquez matter? Well, first off, if you win the Nobel Prize for Literature, that's pretty much like the highest honor you can attain as an author. So yeah, that's a pretty big deal. So Marquez is super famous for a lot of things, his meandering narratives, his gripping imagery, all these things that authors use to make their writing come alive. However, there's one stylistic element that really stands out as being a big piece of Marquez's work. This element is what's known as magic realism. Now magic realism is actually a style, also can even be considered a genre, and it's very popular in South American literature in particular. So what is it? Well basically magic realism is when you take a natural, normal, realistic setting and imbue it or fill it with these magical or fantastical elements. Okay, cool, I get it, Mr. Hargitai, so it's basically like, you know, like Harry Potter. Not quite. While Harry Potter does in fact have many magical occurrences that happen in a realistic world, right? You have the muggles who are actually the regular humans and then you have the wizards who inhabit this world. Right, right, okay, I'll reel it back. But basically, Harry Potter is considered more fantasy because while the magic does exist in an otherwise natural setting, the fact is when muggles or non-magic people see magic happen, they react in a way that we would actually kind of expect them to. <laughs> A defining element of magic realism is the fact that characters tend to see these surreal or supernatural things happening and they kind of just take them in stride and continue going about their daily lives. They say when you meet the love of your life, time stops. And that's true. So that brings us to our first story that we're reading today. The story is called A Very Old Man With Enormous Wings. Right off the bat, you might have a hint that there's gonna be some surreal things or magical things happening within this story. Now, while Marquez is mostly famous for his novels, he also is famous for his short stories. This is a particularly short one, and it shouldn't take you too long to get through. So here's the structure for today. We're going to read this story, but before you do, I actually recommend checking out the Go Formative for the flashcard Quizlet set. Quizlet is basically a studying software, but we'll use it here to front load our vocabulary. So I've already gone ahead and taken out some words that I think might be difficult and given you definitions. You can prep yourself before reading and that way when you encounter the word in the text, you already know what it means. Boom, you're welcome. Once you've done that, go ahead and read that text. Remember, today we're just focusing on baseline comprehension, understanding what is happening in the text, but also keep an eye out for any magic realism you might encounter. Once you've done that, you're going to finish the questions in the Go Formative. There's a mixture of multiple choice, matching, and short answers. This shouldn't be too difficult for you, and I'm excited to see what you all produce. I know you're gonna do a phenomenal job. If you have any questions, of course, direct them at your teachers in the Zoom, but if not, I hope you enjoy your stay in sunny Colombia. Until next time, see you later.